why is this so much harder on camera than it is over than audio? Now I'm like, don't look at, don't, <laughs> don't look at the screen. Just look at the lens. Our remakes. Okay. Our re. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to start up with a blooper reel for this. Are re-releases and remakes something that can drastically enhance the Nintendo Switch and its games library? Or is recycled content something that will eventually doom our favorite hybrid? What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Forest. Gabe is here with me and we're live with you to try out a new kind of show. It's a debate type show where we pick a Switch topic, then take a side and let you be the judge. So in the comments down below, hear us out, hear the pros, hear the cons, and then let your voice be heard. Get your side of the story in down in that comment section. Let us know what makes more sense to you and how you feel about the issue. And obviously we're talking about re-releases, remakes, and a lot of the recent Nintendo games that were announced at the Mini Direct and are bringing back old titles to a brand new platform. I think it's evident that Nintendo has put an increased focus on that for 2018, and we're wondering if it's gonna cause some trouble. Yeah, and it's been a lively topic, lively debate. We've seen a lot of videos and other forum threads. Reddit has been talking about it quite a bit. So mm -hmm. it is on people's minds and we did want to give you our take. Uh, Zach, I actually think that this is kind of a good thing, right? For, for a multitude of reasons. And I'll start with the fact that this gives people that didn't get to play these in the first place a chance to play them. Okay. What if you never had a Wii U, right? Sure. And you never played Tropical Freeze. You never played Bayonetta 2. This is a perfect opportunity to do so. Yeah, which which makes a lot of sense, and I think that is the 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 one sort of saving grace right now is that the Wii U was such in uh, such a, a below average Nintendo console from a popularity standpoint that there are so many players as the Switch sees insane success that never even saw these games, so they kind of get away with them not feeling like re-releases or recycled content because hey, most of our user base never even played Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. People didn't really see Hyrule Warriors. They weren't really experiencing Mario Kart 8, and so it's okay to bring that back. Now, the other side of the story is, what if you did play them? What if you already had the Wii U? What if you're getting the Switch for new experiences? And Nintendo has kind of made it a, a, a plan or just sort of their structure to release one big game a month. And if three, four, five of the months of the year in 2018 are taken up by these re-releases, does that rob us of new games, of the chance to play something brand new, potentially bold, potentially starting a new franchise like Splatoon or ARMS? Wouldn't we rather have much more of that and far less of games that, yeah, some people didn't play, but are being brought back and brought back at a pretty aggressive price point? Well, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a valid counter argument, right? If you're a very hardcore Nintendo fan and you already played all of these, mm -hmm. then I can see how that might not be as great. This way you didn't do as well. So there are more of the other type of person. And honestly, like I have this problem a lot with, with people and, and video games, right? Like they get so angry about their existence. I'm like, people, if you do not like the fact that Bayonetta 2 or Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze or Mario Kart, Pokin, any of these games on Switch, don't buy them and you'll be perfectly fine, <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, there's no requirement to buy them. I think the, the issue comes in, do you feel like it is limiting the potential of the calendar because of their release structure, because of their sort of game plan to put in all of these, and, and look, it, it shifted, right? I feel like this mini direct kind of shifted the, the tide, whereas before we're like, okay, Pokemon Tournament, uh, it's a deluxe version, Mario Kart 8's got all the DLC, and yes, Hyrule Warriors has all the DLC, Tropical Freeze doesn't have any DLC to speak of, they're introducing Funky Kong, which is for beginners, so most players probably won't even see that, that content. Yeah. Charging 60 and having them be more basic versions and, and more re-release style does that does that rub you the wrong way you know it's not it's no longer just the best switch games it's not mario kart and smash yeah. and mario maker because that was like a, a huge you know cultural phenomenon it's it's now expanded beyond that into this the wii u had a lot of great games don't get me wrong i'd love to play wonderful 101 i'd love to get some pikmin 3 action but do we really want the the switch to be the apologist for the wii u yeah and, and i guess that's where it's a little bit tricky right because nintendo doesn't seem like they're going to sell their uh, Wii U re-releases for anything less than $60. At, at least it doesn't, we have no indication of that. Yeah. But third party, uh, we have uh, 
Dark Souls coming in, that's $40. We had LA Noir come out at $50. Yes, Skyrim and Doom were both 60. So third party, there's a little bit of variation there. And of course the Twitch, uh, the, the Switch tax being what the Switch tech is sometimes, like un that's an unfortunate reality, but I don't think that has too much to do with the fact that these are ports. It's just cartridge based uh, limitations, right? These cartridges cost more money and the ones with uh, higher capacity, you know, they're not ready quite yet. Those recently got pushed back. So I feel like that might be a little bit more of a factor when it comes to that. But you know, that's one thing that's very hard to, you know, argue against, right? The price point. Uh, do I do I want to play? Let, let's say I already played the heck out of Bayonetta 2. Do I want to pay $60 again to play it again? You know, probably not. But then that goes back to my prior point where like, hey, don't buy it. This one isn't for you. Nintendo will have other stuff coming for you. They're working on a lot of things. And the thing that I do maintain is that all of these ports, re-releases, recycles, whatever you want, you want to call them, they do not take away development from anything mm -hmm. else. I truly don't believe... I don't think sure. that the people that are making the next, you know, major Nintendo game, I, I was going to say Pokemon, but that's Pokemon Company, completely different. But, you know, they're not the same people that are making these re-releases. So, if anything, this is easier for game developers, right? Because that was going to be another one of right. my points. One of these re-releases that, you know, still has a chance at selling a couple million, it's way easier to make than a brand new game. Right. And of course, you probably still have your A team working on a brand new game. But if you're a development team that's big enough, you have a B team that could also just be porting this over. And, you know, this is going to make it so that the wait for that next big thing isn't as unbearable. Yeah. And, and that is definitely a valid point. I'm sure there is a small resource crunch when you are splitting teams or when you are having, you know, smaller projects and bigger projects. But I agree with you that overall, it's not it's not like oh Metroid Prime 4 is coming out later because they worked on Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze for for Switch. I don't believe that at all. And you're right. The release calendar could just be slimmer. It's not that oh if we take out Donkey Kong, we take out Hyrule Warriors, we're going to all of a sudden get a brand new Kid Icarus and a brand new Star Fox. That's not those two do not go hand in hand at all. Um, I think you mentioned Dark Souls and to me that is the example where it's a-okay. It is a Remake that is being released multi-platform and the Switch is getting it at the same time, totally cool with that. I take a little more umbrage with things like Skyrim, Doom, Wolfenstein 2, and I'm not trying to pick on Bethesda, I'm just using them as an example. The first year it's okay. I don't know that by fall 2018, holiday 2018, I really want to be playing old games that are just, quote, good for the Switch. Is there a point, Gabe, that we pass that line that, oh, bring it because it's cool for the Switch is is done, and we just want new games that, yeah, they take advantage of the Switch's, you know, different features, but we're not looking to the past to fulfill the Switch's future. I definitely think there's a point where that is, you know, the common thinking, but we're not there yet. Like, we're barely in the second calendar year of Nintendo. I mean, we're not even past the first calendar year of Nintendo Switch. It was a March release. It's not March of the first year yet. So, has it been 12 months? They st We still right. have some leeway as far as that goes. So... I have no problem with Wolfenstein 2 coming out late, but of course, in the future, yes, we want day and date. For now, you know, we understand new platform to develop for, and you have to make concessions because it's not as graphically powerful as the other platforms that these games are available on. Like, I I'm giving them a little bit of leeway. At some point, that does stop. But for right now, I think bolstering the yeah. Switch's library with third party, even if it is games that have been available on other platforms, it's important. Yeah, and I think we can't ignore their advantage, and I'm going to kind of shift over to your pro side just for a hot minute. Being able to take the game portably, you know, typically if a game released late on Xbox One or late on PS4, you'd be like, yay, woohoo, who cares? It would not be a noteworthy announcement. It wouldn't really get a whole lot of buzz. The fact that, okay, now we can play, like, Ease 8 on the go on a Nintendo platform. Okay, I'm going to take that back. And yeah, here is where I'm going to jump over to your pro side for a hot minute because look, you cannot you cannot erase or negate the advantage that Nintendo has by the Switch being a hybrid console. It is exciting when a game gets announced for Switch, even if it came out years ago on other platforms. Whereas with Xbox One, PS4, okay, a port comes far later in the future, and whatever, it's not a very big announcement, but now you can take Skyrim on the go, that's a very novel concept it's very in practice a, a great concept as proven and I, I i know that there is this kind of divide of like do we give the the switch sort of that pass because it wouldn't it wouldn't get excitement on another platform but those other platforms aren't doing what the switch is able to do and i, I think that's a fact that you just will never be able to ignore because even in 2020 if there is a great game from the past say bioshock 
and that comes to Switch. Yeah, if it came to PS5, people would be like, woohoo, who cares? But if it came to Switch, now the fact that you get Bioshock on the go, that still holds a lot of value to a big portion of the audience as evidenced by how many people primarily play the Switch in the handheld yeah, mode. Yeah, I mean, I would like to thank you for making these points for me, but, you know, I, 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 you know, <laughs> I, I do welcome. think that overall, they are, they are, they're a positive thing, right? Is it what we want right now? Absolutely not. But the fact of the matter is Bayonetta 3, Pokemon, Metroid, they're not ready. No matter how much we want them to be, it's not time. It, you know, maybe at E3 things mm -hmm. change a little bit and they announce some like major stuff and, and we fully believe they're going to because Nintendo's not going to go into holiday with, you know, with no games. Like, you know, right now what we know is, you know, fr from right. May, you know, full or earlier in the year. So that stuff is coming. So a little bit of patience and, you know, if you never played these games, like Bayonetta 2 for me, brand new game, I am so hyped for that, right? So I, I feel it's so difficult mm -hmm. to ignore that for those of us that are still like, you know, we love Nintendo, but the Wii U wasn't our platform. Like, it wasn't for me. And the Switch is. I'm all on board yeah. the Switch. And I, I think that this is good. Obviously, people are going to complain on the internet. And that, that's a thing that didn't happen. But I think when it all comes down to it, this is this is good stuff. Plus, the, you mentioned it just now, right? You say, oh, it'd be cool to have, Vito, uh, you know, Beautiful Joe, Wonderful 101. Like, any one, like one of these like games. Beautiful Joe's a little older. But, you know, having games like that that you know, no one experience really, uh, especially in the case of Wonderful 101. Like yeah. People want that game on Switch, but then it gets re like announced and then people are like, oh, it's just ports. So, you know, it's it's a huge catch 22. We can't have it both ways. We have to just kind of live with it. So, you know, I, I say just look at it from the better aspect. Yeah, and I think sales, obviously, at the end of the day are the, the dictating factor, but I do feel that industry perspective and sort of Positive mindshare is important. It's something Nintendo lost with the Wii U. They've gained back in, you know, folds with the Switch. I would hate to see that start to disintegrate because it's viewed as a recycle platform. It's viewed as a re-release platform. So even if it's fine by fans, even if it's, oh, just some people on the internet complaining, I do think Nintendo should be careful not to get too aggressive with this, right? If for nothing else, that right now they are the darling of the, the game's journalism space and of the game's industry as a whole space, I don't want to see that begin to fall apart because the people that do play all the games, the people that do have the loudest voices on the internet are feeling like the Switch is just this redo. And I, I wanna introduce something else, which is that, okay, Nintendo is bringing back Donkey Kong, Country Tropical Freeze, Hyrule Warriors. Why are they not bringing back the re-releases that we would love? The, the virtual console, where is that in this equation? Why are they so quick to give us Wii U ports and not, the Super Nintendo, the N64, the GameCube re-releases, the recycles that we would love. And tying into that, the price of those would be substantially lower. And I feel like that becomes a much easier pill to swallow. Well, I, I still think some version of Virtual Console is coming. It's tied to the online service in some fashion, probably. So that's why we haven't heard about it. Also, you know, there's a bigger yeah. profit margin, probably, when selling you a $60 game. So, I mean... Of course. I just, just just for how it looks to to the industry, the fans. I think people are clamoring for. We're like, hey, give us your old games from from here. I don't know that many people are clamoring for Hyrule Warriors. How do you feel about the sixty dollar price point? And to me, I would be far more likely to embrace this idea wholeheartedly if this was a like Wii U Selects collection for forty dollars. And and Nintendo is not going to do that. They established very early on that. Games for Switch are $60, and they have a history of that. Mario never drops in price. Smash does not drop in price. Zelda does not drop in price. They are expensive games at their fullest price point years after release, and that's okay. They feel the, the evergreen nature of their titles is worthy of the, the $60 price point, regardless of its date in that console's life cycle or even beyond. Yeah. But I do think in this situation, it would be of huge relief if they were at $40. It, it, it would be. but And I, I feel like some of that gets supplemented because you get two games. Like Bayonetta, you're getting Bayonetta 1 and 2 for 60 So it's not like you're just getting one game. You're getting two right. full-length games. Sure. And some definitely take better care of the price than others. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe giving you all the DLC. Hyrule Warriors giving you all the DLC. I, I guess right now the one that stands out is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which is a phenomenal game. Like, I love that game to death. Don't get me wrong. One of my favorite games that year, one of my favorite platformers of, of the last decade. It's not getting much. And so it feels like, yes, for the people that didn't play it, they don't care. 
hey, it's, it's a new game to them, so $60 makes sense. But for me, like, I already paid $60 for that, and I would like to play it again, but it would be great if there was a way to get that at a more mid-tier price point. I just, I'm not even going to argue that point strongly because I know it's something yeah. that won't happen. I mean, regardless of though, I, I think that, you know, a lot of people fall under your side and a lot of people fall under my side. Like, yeah, there, there's both goods and bads to this and, you know, let's try to remain positive. And, and honestly, the more games on Switch, the better, uh, the, the more games of quality, let me say that. And uh, despite what you may think and you having already played it, these games are quality. Like Donkey Kong, great game. Bayonetta, great games. Hyrule Warriors, like none, none, neither of us are super into it, but, you know, people do like that game. They are bringing games that are still of For great sure. quality. And, you know, the price point being what the price point is, games are an expensive hobby. They always have been. But Nintendo is still doing other things, right? We, we have Labo now, which is like darn near revolutionary because it's so different. So mm -hmm. while we're getting a lot of same, we are still getting different. And as long as they continue to strike that balance, I think we're good. Yeah, and I think as they incorporate more third party into the fold and with day and date releases like we're seeing with Dark Souls Remastered, that will ease this a lot because then it takes some of the weight off of Nintendo's shoulders so you're not just sitting there desperate for whatever Nintendo's singular release for that month is, right? It's okay if you get Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze in May if we're also getting Dark Souls and we're also getting, you know, whatever, you know, when Madden eventually comes out and eventually Call of Duty comes out. And if they are able to secure more and more day and date multi-platforms to bring them level with the other consoles in those areas, I think it shifts and then you're like, okay, so yeah, I get this cool Donkey Kong game along with all that other stuff, it it right now is kind of in that awkward spot of like, yes, the Switch has been around for enough time to have quite a few releases, but not around enough for those partnerships to fully play out. And therefore, it can feel awkward when it's like, okay, well, I've got this brand new system I just dropped $300 on and $150 on extra controllers, and the game they're trying to sell me is a re-release recycled for 60. It feels weird. If there was three other big games, like on PS4 or Xbox One, it would be, I think, a moot point. So this is something that will continue to evolve and change. But yeah, we definitely want to know what you think in the comments down below. How do you feel about the issue of re-releases, recycled games on the Switch? Do you agree more with the pro side of things? Do you agree more with the con side of things? Or do you have a different perspective entirely? Talk at us, let us know. Get down and dirty in those comments. We'll be reading them ASAP. Until next time, everybody. Also, if you have any feedback on this show, debates, We'd love to do more, so give us your input. And until next time, for myself and Gabe, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and cool discussions like these. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the Switch Force if you'd like to interact with us more, play along with our polls, and get up to the date announcements about our videos and other happenings with the channel. For myself and Gabe, until next time, Switch Force out.